What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Debbie Royale. Today, we're going to do something a little different here. We're going to be looking at some dynasty targets that you could be targeting in your startup drafts. Now, even if you're not in a startup draft right now, these are also some stashes that you can grab or maybe some guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to include some trades that have happened with them so you can kind of see where their value is right now. And the trades all are pretty, you know, they're doable in your leagues to where you you be you be comfortable with that, right? So if you're not in a startup, this is still a video to watch. If you are in a startup, you should smash this video, this like button and say, hey, I appreciate looking at these four guys in your leagues, in your startup drafts that can accrue value, right? What we're doing right now is we're looking at guys from 15th round or, or, or deeper, right? You're in a startup. Everybody's excited about those first 10 to 12 rounds. Then it gets grueling. All right, I'm just going to draft these guys. But there's an art to drafting in those late rounds when you're looking for, hey, can they accrue value for me? And can I be able to move them as the season goes? That's what you're looking for. And can I plug and play these guys in a, in a, in a you know, in a matchup later in the season where they can win me, win me the league, right? So you're looking at both those things. There's an art to drafting in these type of areas. So we're going to be looking at four players based on their ADP, where their deep stashes, guys that you can accrue value with, win your league with in this video. So while the intro is going, hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll check you on the other side. All right, let's get into these dynasty targets and go through them. So we're going to do for each one. First one, Samaj P. Ryan. Samaj is a guy that everybody should be liking right now. Now, his ADP is kind of different. So his ADP has gone up to like 15th round, according to DLF's ADP, running back 53. But I will say like in a, in a mock, in a startup that we just did, he went at running back in the 20th round and like running back 72. So his value is kind of all over the place. Now, Sean Payton, new head coach of the Broncos, just came out and said, hey, he's very important to us. So that's definitely going to shoot up his ADP. But this is a kid, a guy that you should be grabbing in your, in your drafts late, right? Because when you're looking at late round guys and you're looking at those late round targets, you're hoping that, hey, he's at running back two and maybe can do some running back one damage, right? Javante Williams might be back, but there's rumors that knee is not going to be healthy. And if you look at what J.K. Dobbins did, look at how much time he missed at the beginning of season you can get p ryan here and you could have just a value asset right um he's gonna run a balanced west coast offense that's sean payton he did that in 18 19 and 20 and the saints ranked among the top four in passing targets going to running backs so p ryan is a legit pass catcher He's going to have that, you know, and he's a very good pass blocker. So he's going to be on the field there. Uh, he caught over 80% of his passes thrown his way. And then last season, he got four touchdown passes, right? And in according to PFF, he graded at 72.7 as a pass blocker. So he's going to fit the Peyton offense. There's a reason why Peyton went and grabbed this kid, and they're going to have him, right? Now, in the three games that P. Ryan got the bulk of the Bengals carries, he finished his running back two, running back 10, and running back four in PPR. And I know he was in the Bengals offense, but listen to that again. Running back two, 10, and four. If he can have that in Denver, where he's going to have a bit of, bit of a improved offensive line and he can kind of get that value and that balance, this is exactly the type of guy you're looking for in that 15th to 20th round. He's going to accrue value. You can ship him, you can trade him, you can do all kinds of different things there. As far as his trade value right now, uh, Johnu Smith for um, Samaj P. Ryan just happened uh, two days ago, according to this, in a basic tight end, no tight end premium. If you want to get rid of this Johnu Smith and maybe go grab P. Ryan, he's He's a great, great target right now. That is really good value, too, if you have him. Now, second guy that I'm not going to quit is my guy, Pierre Strong. You know, Pierre Strong is one of those things that does well. Like, he's on the Patriots, a run-first team. Uh, running backs are targeted early and often as well, though, in this offense. Uh, he's a really, really good back. And when you're looking at it last year, he's pretty efficient. He rushed for 10 times, 100 yards. He caught seven of his targets for 47 yards. So efficiency-wise, he wasn't bad. Obviously, we wanted to see more. He was a little banged up. Uh, but I do think with how this offseason is shaped up and you're looking at kind of like, hey, what does their depth chart look like, especially in that running back room? So, again, you're looking for guys. OK, what can they what, you know, what can these guys do, how they accrue value? In the 20th round, you're looking at Pierre Strong. You know, I know that, you know, based on some depth charts out there, he's behind James Robinson. I don't think he is. I think James Robinson really fits the Ramondre Stevenson role. And Ramondre, you know, he could get banged up. He has that there. I think Pierre kind of 
charts in as that pass catching back. And if you can get him late 20th round and, and you could take a shot on him, he, he could be there. He could get that value for you. And I think Pierre could be like the running back one over James Robinson if, if something was to happen to Ramondre. And if you're thinking in 20th round and you're going to take a shot at him as running back 78, I think that's good value, right? Now, as far as like trade value where he's going right now, Pierre Strong for Devin Duvernay is something that just happened in a PPR league. Devin Duvernay is one of those people like, what are we doing with him? Like when we talk about him just overall as like a, as a prospect, there's tons of wide receivers out there. Like I wouldn't trade for Devin Duvernay because just look at how, you know, just look how many wide receivers are out there that can just give you value. You don't need that. Pierre Strong is someone that could actually step up. Could he has a running back one profile and he's someone that I would be interested in at cost, like especially in startups. Like if you're going to get him that 20th round, um, I saw someone get him the 23rd round, like if in that area and he could be that running back one on, on New England, that's something to really like. That's something that you could go out there and get value for. So Pierre Strong is my second one. My third one is Cade Otten. So when you're looking at Cade Otten, I wanted to throw a tight end in here. You know, Tom Brady retired. We know that. You know, Otten, though, could have a pretty big year. It, it, and again, 33, tight end 33, 24th round. So when you're looking at tight ends, like, this is not a bad guy to kind of take a shot on. Now, th some people draft him a little higher in tight end premium, so you're looking at, like, 15th or 16th round. But he's still late, right? He's still going in that, again, ADP. I think his ADP here is maybe a little lower than this, but you can still get him in the 18 to 24 range. Um, now, he averaged 7.9 points per fantasy games last year and half PPR. So uh, so when you're looking at that, he's probably just about 10 points per game in PPR standpoint. He had five games with six or more targets. So you like that. Now, the number that stands out to me is Otten was fifth among tight ends and Renzo targets last year. He had 16 red zone targets. And he showed he had a little ability to make the play, right? So you like that. He finished fifth on the team in targets last year. So that, that you know, Again, one of those things that you have to see there, like he could kind of step up there. Um, I I like the Kate Otten call. I think Kate Otten is a guy that you could kind of take advantage of, um, especially late. It's not going to cost you anything. So when we're thinking of like what, what that team is going to look like, I know that the quarterback situation is not amazing, but he's a guy that can come step in and maybe be that red zone target and you're excited about it. And I think those red zone targets are where what matters. And when we talk about these guys and we're talking about this stuff, you know, we're mentioning, hey, they got to score points. What red zone touchdowns score points? And he's the tight end one, right? So, you know, Cameron Braid is not there. He's going to be that guy stepping forward and being in there. Uh, yes, they have Mike Evans. Yes, they have Russell Gage, Chris Godwin, these guys. But K. Dotton could be that go-to guy in that red zone that you're looking for. So K. Dotton, to me, he is a deep dynasty stash or guy in your startup. Right now, a trade that just happened in a regular tight end, uh, no tight end premium, was Chase Edmonds and Hunter Renfro for K. Dotton. Chase Edmonds, to me, is out. Hunter Renfro is an interesting piece, but right now in Las Vegas, he's not someone that I want. But that is just to show you that value, right? Chase Edmonds for Kate Otten. Uh, Hunter Renfro for Kate Otten there. And then my last guy, I'm going to throw a rookie in here. And I know that, you know, as far as startups go, these are always risky because you're just looking for like, hey, what is his draft capital going to be? But Jonathan Mingo is getting talked about. Now, a lot of people are kind of debating him in terms of what he is, but he's getting drafted as 18th round wide receiver 77. When you're looking at what he does well, really good size, athleticism, explosive after the cat catch, excuse me, played down uh, the ball downfield really well, big size. Teams are going to like him. And it just came out recently as I was going through like, hey, and right now we know it's smokescreen season and we know like, hey, what is this going to be? When you're looking at him, I think I think he could be. Todd McShay just released him as the Chiefs select him at, at, at 63, second, third round. He's getting a lot of love out there right now, and especially for the Chiefs. I, I've seen a lot of Chiefs beat reporters. They talk about him. Uh, 4 4 6 40, 39 inch vertical. I, again, so if you look at rookie wide receivers, this is the kid. He's getting a little buzz right now. If he goes to the Chiefs, and we're talking about that, or he goes to a great landing spot, He's not going to go to 18th round as a wide receiver 77 anymore, right? He's going to be bumping up, and that's where you get that value. You can ship him now. You can trade him. So if you're in a dynasty startup right now, you can go grab him right now, and, and you're going to accrue value. And that is the way to go. That is how you kind of do the, the dynasty startups and looking at it. And Mingo's one of those guys that he's not one of these rookies that are well-known in terms of the rookie class, but he's a guy you could stash late, and then he gets that, that draft capital, and someone goes to their – you know, their sleeper profile and they look, Hey, who has this guy? And now you do, and they're excited. And now you can kind of pounce. 
that's how you dynasty. That's how you accrue value. And that's kind of how you manipulate your league mates. Cause that's why we're here to win. Right? So I hope you enjoyed this. I appreciate you guys. Uh, let me know in the comments. What do you guys think about these dynasty targets? Is there anybody else that you're targeting out there in your startups? Let me know. I appreciate you guys. See you guys later.